Hello everybody, my name is Sriti Ramakrishnan and today I will be discussing the cultural beauty standards and their implications on international marketing. So beauty as a concept is an inf incredibly fluid concept that is held in a structure of cultural values and standards. When we're discussing beauty, typically the population that's associated with this concept is females and women, so for the duration of this presentation, women will be the focus. Um, when we analyze different cultures and the different beauty standards that they have, it's important to also look at the beauty practices because that's a good indicator of the standards that they want to attain. So in some Southeast Asian tribes, some of the tribe women participate in neck elongation. And in older Chinese times, foot binding was a very common practice. And there are other practices like this all over the world that have strong implications as to defining what the beauty standards are for the society. Um, when looking at cosmetics marketing in particular, these beauty standards have strong implications to making a good advertising campaign and seeing what would be most effective in selling cosmetics throughout the world. So over this course of the presentation, we will identify Eastern and Western standards of beauty and see what these implications are for the marketing world. In order to establish beauty ideals, Kim L. Bissell and Ji Young Chung from the College of Communication and Information Sciences at the University of Alabama conducted a study that would identify predictors related to attractiveness, ideals, and appearance norms in the United States and South Korea. Um, what they did was essentially they had 17 models from different ethnicities and different backgrounds, and they had the participants analyze their faces and upper bodies separately so they were not based on body shape or size and then the participants were asked to evaluate the women according to perceived attractiveness and perceived femininity. So after they did this study they found some interesting ideals in the United States and South Korea. They found that mass media is a very good barometer of beauty ideals. So when looking at the mass media in America, it shows that beauty is celebrated and upheld as a quality that will re result in success in multiple arenas. So um, if you look at People Magazine, they have a special issue every year that lists out the 100 most beautiful people. And there's a large pageantry society in America, all the way from Miss Universe to Miss uh, Hawaii, Hawaiian Tropic. So this is also an element of society that shows the values that American society has when it comes to beauty. So after analyzing the mass media, there were certain trends that are popular in American society, such as thin is in, tan skin is fashionable, and being young is crucial. This can be seen through the magazine ads and billboards, um, TV shows like America's Next Top Model, etc. So now that we've kind of established a baseline for American standards of beauty, we'll move on to South Korean. In South Korea, one of the most popular trends and the most uh, impactful when it comes to beauty standards is the plastic surgery trends. What's interesting to note is a lot of the surgery trends involve Asian consumers or customers looking more westernized. And you can tell that from the popular trends such as double eyelid surgery, raised noses, and um, double or jaw surgeries as well. Uh, another important beauty trend that's occurring um, in more recent times in South Korea is dieting. And a lot of local studies on dieting and body image have shown that women pursue a certain body ideal to achieve social recognition in a male-dominant society. I think 
when we analyze and compare and contrast the American society and South Korean society, it's important to note that there's a lot more interplay going on now that there's a lot of technology and a lot more connections throughout the world. The next aspect that I'm going to focus on is skin beauty. Now, skin beauty is a very important part of standards of beauty all around the world, and it's also one of the most controversial. Um, Ji Zhang, who did the study on um, whiteness and tanness and the importance of skin tones amongst cultures, stated that when when looking at ideals of skin beauty, skin tone and complexion are some of the most diverse across societies and generations. And this can be seen when you're looking at South Korean cultures or Asian cultures that have an emphasis on having fairer skin, whiter skin, and having tan skin being more fashionable in the United States or Western nations. Um, Coco Chanel is actually considered to be the person that made tan skin fashionable in Western society. So with this ideal in mind, it's important to note that the standards of beauty have implications when marketing too. So when looking at cosmetics marketing for skin beauty, you notice that the Asian advertising reflects the Asian skin standards of beauty really well. Um, the products focus on the skin whitening and the brightening and the bleaching, and the American ones typically focus on the anti-aging and anti-wrinkle. Um, the, there was a study conducted by Meng Zhang and King Li Ji of the University of Florida, and they analyzed the connection between skin beauty advertisements and the use of the tan versus white dichotomy. And the advertisements that you see here are a reflection of their findings that found skin beauty advertisements do reflect the cultural standards of skin beauty. So to end this presentation, I'm just going to take a quick look at this General Mills case study and see how understanding cultural differences does make a strong impact when designing marketing campaigns. So General Mills was garnering huge success with their Betty Crocker cake mixes. And they thought it would be really popular in Japan because Japanese didn't typically make cakes at home. And the cakes that they wanted to buy at bakeries were typically really expensive. So they thought this would be a great market to tap into. So when they marketed the cake mix, they did so in a way that was very similar to how they would market in the United States. But because they failed to recognize the cultural differences, it, didn't, it wasn't as effective because they didn't realize that Japanese houses, A, typically didn't have ovens, and so they would have to use their rice cooker. And to use the rice cooker was difficult because the rice was such an important staple of the Japanese culture and Japanese family time that they wouldn't waste um, the rice cooker to just make cakes. So, because they didn't identify this, their marketing campaign did not do so well. So in general, when you're looking at campaigns and advertising and the best way to market, it's important to acknowledge these cultural differences and uh, identify that if you're going to advertise, it's best to take a look at the society that you're advertising to and not make assumptions as to what you think is going to work. Thank you very much.